spirit trip. Welcome you to come and drain. Lord, come and rain on the spirit trip. We welcome you to come and Brothers and sisters, my name is Jacqueline Gala, and I'm delighted to share the word of God with us today again. I love the Lord for he saved me. I am so thankful to you for your continued support in tuning in and following us on our Facebook pages and even subscribing to our YouTube channels. May the Lord bless you for your commitment. And I know since we began this uh, month, it has been a month of mid-thanksgiving for the St. Stephen's uh, Cathedral Church. And I've been sharing with us on the topic of thanksgiving. We have been looking at things that kill the spirit of thanksgiving in our lives. And in our last sharing last week, we actually focused on the consequences of an, an unthankful heart. And some of the things we mentioned in the last sharing was that uh, an unthankful heart would always bring forth judgment from God. It draws the presence of God away from us. And an unthankful heart, as we remember, is a heart that will generate generational iniquity or sin in us. That when we bear unthankfulness, and we do not correct it with God, then it will run through our generations. And as we finalize our teachings uh, on thanksgiving, I would like us today to focus on overcoming unthankfulness. How then can we do away with an unthankful heart and put on a thankful heart? For the Bible tells us that God is pleased when we are thankful. But when we bear unthankfulness, it seems God is not happy about us. His presence does not dwell with us. And so today we are going to focus on overcoming unthankfulness. And we will read from the book of First Timothy, chapter 6. We will read verse 6 to 7. Paul's letter to Timothy the first one, chapter 6, verse 6 to 7. And he says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you so much. We bless your name for your word. And as you speak to us, O oh God, I pray that the power of your Holy Spirit will minister unto us in a very special way. Our desire is, Lord, that we may bear a thankful heart and please you. So direct our discussions and our reflections, Lord, for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So our big question today is, an unthankful heart 
his displeasure to God? How can I overcome a heart that is not thankful or an unthankful heart? How can I overcome unthankfulness in my life? Because this kind of a life is not a life that is pleasing to God. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to Timothy, gives us some guidelines on how to overcome unthankfulness in our lives. We know that Paul had a, a very beloved son called Timothy. He's one who was a very close companion to, to, to Paul. Paul loved him so much. In fact, he refers to him as a son in his letters. And we know that Timothy was a, a young man dedicated to the work of God. And Paul wrote these two letters to Timothy because he was in his aging, uh, in, in his old age, and he was actually now putting leadership on Timothy, equipping him so that he takes up the work of the church. He had actually appointed him as a leader in the church at Ephesus. In his first letter, Paul encourages Timothy to continue in his ministry and also gives him instructions on how to do that ministry. In chapter 6, where we have read, Paul is actually, from chapter, verse 3 to verse 5, he's actually calling the attention of Timothy to a life that is not godly, but is referred to godly by a category of people. And he compares that godliness with the godliness that he comes to talk about in verse 6. The main question, as I said to us today, is how can we overcome unthankfulness? And in this letter to Timothy, Paul is actually suggesting to us that the only way to overcome unthankfulness or a life that is not worthy or pleasing to God is by embracing true godliness. This is godliness that is accompanied by contentment. And Paul says, this godliness, which is accompanied with contentment, produces great gain. In the, in the preceding verses, as, as I said, in verse 3 to 5, he actually tells Timothy that there is a godliness that people have embraced and have really focused on, but it is not true godliness as its focus is towards financial gain or material possession. But this, he doesn't speak like this to refer to a people that would uh, embrace poverty and uh, stop working hard. This did not imply that believers should live in poverty. But this implied that they need to amass wealth, but not focus on the wealth, but focus on God, the owner and giver of everything. He tells Timothy that such a type of godliness, such a form of godliness, is not a godliness that would bring him any gain. Instead, in verse 6 where we read from, he says, godliness with contentment is what would bring him gain. And so what kind of godliness is this that Paul is talking about to Timothy? Just before we come to the answer to that question, I would like us to go back to Timothy, 2 Timothy, chapter 2, sorry, chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. And this is what Paul writes. He brings to the attention of Timothy that in the last days, there are terrible things that will happen. People will stop loving others and they will be lovers of themselves. They will be lovers of money so much People will be filled with, uh, you know, pride. They will be boastful. They will be abusive. And he names a number of things 
that categorize or uh, symbolize a kind of god godliness that people will embrace. They will love so much slandering. They will be brutal. They will treat each other with harshness and bitternesses. They will be treacherous. They will be lovers of pleasure rather than of God. I've only picked a number of them, but I, I just pray that you read the whole of them. He talks about ungrateful or unthankfulness as one of the things that will categorize or um, it will characterize the life of people in the last days. And he tells Timothy in the last, in, in the last part of verse 5 and says, have nothing to do with them. In other words, watch yourself against such kind or such forms of godlinesses. Such forms of godliness have nothing to do with them. And looking at the above list, you notice that unthankfulness is one of the things that Paul is telling Timothy, guard yourself from it. How is uh, Timothy going to do this? This is why he now brings in verse 6 of First Timothy chapter 6, where we, uh, we read from. And he says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. In other words, Timothy is to embrace true godliness with contentment as the only way that would bring him great gain. And so to, for him to overcome this false form of godliness, that when you look at that list, is actually talking about the things we've been talking about here as which would constitute an unthankful heart. You remember that lesson that we talked about. And Paul is actually uh, bringing our attention to a true godliness that is influenced, that is centered on God himself as one that would help us overcome an unthankful heart. But what is this true godliness that Paul is talking about? According to um, the NIV Study Bible Dictionary, godliness is, de is defined as that, that devotion towards God and a proper conduct, a proper lifestyle that springs from a right relationship with God. In simpler terms, godliness is a God-centered life, one that grows through the presence of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit in our lives. This is a kind of life that gives us peace. It gives us confidence to know that God cares and he indeed values and loves us, as indicated in Psalm 37 verse 25 by uh, David the king. On the other hand, what is contentment? It is finding joy in what God has given us. It is also to be completely sufficient and satisfied. I don't want to go into deeper in, uh, in, uh, definition of contentment because uh, we have heard much about it as the provost was te uh, teaching us in our Sunday teachings. Contentment is also finding rest in God's love. And Paul is the greatest uh, witness to this kind of a life of contentment. He actually testifies about it in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 11 to 13. So what is this true godliness that Paul is actually telling Timothy to pursue? The exact definition or explanation is given in 2 Timothy, his second letter to Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 14 to verse 15. He says, but as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learnt it and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. This is a godliness that is influenced by the scriptures. So Paul is actually uh, impressing on Timothy that he should be influenced by a godliness 
that springs from the scriptures, which he has always known from his childhood. And the word of God is actually the source of true godliness. If we are to overcome an unthankful heart or unthankfulness in our lives, we need to embrace a godliness, a lifestyle that is devoted to God, which is influenced by his word. So that means we must be, you know, committed and dedicated in studying the scriptures or the word of God. The second thing that, uh, the second godliness, uh, influence of this godliness springs from the example of those who have stood firm in their faith in God. Paul uh, tells Timothy to embrace this kind of godliness that he has also seen in him as his mentor, but also in others who have stood in faith and uh, have really pursued and, and, and dedicated their lives to God. But this godliness must be accompanied by contentment, as we said earlier. Why contentment? He brings us to verse 7 of uh, First Timothy chapter 6, where we read from. And in verse 7, he says, For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. Meaning what? That we own nothing, and we can take nothing from this world. Everything, in other words, goes back to Psalm 24, that everything belongs to God, including us. We are God's. And, the, and therefore, that tells us where our focus needs to be. In as much as God has blessed us with possessions and, uh, you know, things that we can call ours, they are not really ours. They all belong to God and we are only but stewards. The God who has given them to us has the power also to take them away. And Job is a clear example in this. His statement after he lost everything, including his children. Job rose in his pain of loss. And he, he said these words. Naked I came from my mother's womb. And naked I shall depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Job ch uh, chapter 1 and verse 21. It was so painful for him. But he noticed that he owned nothing in as much as he was the greatest, wealthiest person in those times that he lived. So friends, what is this telling us? That for us to overcome unthankfulness, remember things that constitute unthankfulness. One was rebellion. As we looked at them in our previous lessons, we also talked about forgetfulness. We also talked about uh, greed as one of the things that uh, contribute to an unthankful heart. And so how can we overcome? How can we deal with unthankfulness in our lives? Well, Paul, in his letter to Timothy, He's talking to us today and reminding us that we need to devote our lives to God completely. And our devotion to God must be centered on his word, influenced by his word. We must know the word of God. We must dedicate time to read and to learn from God through his word. We must also persist in prayer. The only way to acknowledge God and what he has done to us is to humble ourselves before him in prayer and acknowledge that he owns everything and we have nothing that we brought on earth and we will take nothing from this earth. And the final thing that we must do is that we must focus more on God rather than on that which he has given to us. We must see God in the possessions that we have. Whatever God has blessed us with, let us not see any, anything about us in them, but let us have hearts that will acknowledge the hand of God 
in bringing us this far and knowing that without God's help and power, we would not be where we are. That God is the owner of everything and that without him, we can do nothing. Focusing on God reminds us that he is the author of this life and he is the one who can only take it away. And so for us, God is calling us as we reflect and think about our unthankfulness because none of us is perfect really. None of us can say, cannot say, none of us can say that they have never felt unthankful in their hearts. We all have come through some unthankfulness of a kind in our hearts. But God is calling us today and reminding us that everything belongs to him and is pleased when we honor him with thanksgiving. But when we don't thank him, when our hearts are filled with unthankfulness, he is not pleased with us. And so to overcome unthankfulness in our hearts, we must have a godliness that is accompanied with contentment, which will bring great gain to us. How? Our focus will not be on the things that God has given us, on the life that is, he's given us. Our focus will be on him and we will know that he is the author of everything and sustainer of all. For we brought nothing into this world and we can take nothing out of it. May the Lord help us to be able to acknowledge and praise him at all times. Acknowledge and praise him and thank him in everything and for everything. For it is his will for us in Christ Jesus. May you join me to say no to unthankfulness. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much for the teaching of your word. We bless your name indeed. And our desire is that we will say no to unthankfulness and be filled with godliness that springs from you, that fills us with a thankful heart. Bless everyone who's heard this word, Lord. May you hear their cries and their pleas to you, and may you answer them when they call unto you. Bless us together, Lord, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and God richly bless you.